Welcome everyone, and thank you for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're so glad you're here. If you're watching via YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications to cue you when there are new videos. And be sure to visit, like, and follow our Facebook page for posts, shares, and upcoming events and videos. Want to learn more about our ministry? Visit our website at gloria-day.com. You'll find ways to get involved, links to archived worships and helpful items for your spiritual journey, activities for the family, and more. Thank you so much for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're so glad you're here and that you're joining us for worship.
friends. It's good to see you again. Welcome to worship. A couple of announcements just to keep you in the know. Uh, we are getting together to attend Burn Pizza. That's an event that has live music and you can order pizza and just eat, enjoy each other's company. So we're going to do this as a church. Anyone who wants to come can sit together and um, listen to the music and maybe share a little bit about what's going on in their lives together. So if you'd like to attend that, it's on Wednesday, June 19th from five o'clock to eight o'clock. Uh, you can order your pizza ahead of time and uh, just meet us there, all right? You can find that by just Googling burn pizza and it'll come up. Then also you should know that the Looking Within Center is hosting art and spirituality. It is called Heartful Meditations. Starts June 18th, which is a Tuesday. You need to register by Friday, June 14th if you'd like to participate. You don't need to have any art experience in order to be part of this. It's gonna be led by LaVon uh, Lovestad. And you can register online at our website or by calling the office. Uh, another thing you need to know is that today, while you guys are watching online, we are in person and on Zoom having a congregational meeting to talk about some of the building updates that need to happen and whether or not we're going to take these building updates on. So if you'd like to know more about the results of that, or you want to jump off and join that meeting, uh, go to our website and uh, it will give you more information. And then finally, VBA starts tomorrow. That's Vacation Bible Adventure. That means that the, the church building is gonna be filled with littles all over the place. Kids from preschool through fifth grade are gonna be enjoying Bible stories and crafts and, and snacks and science experiments and skits and songs. It's gonna be great. It's from like nine o'clock, I think, until 12 o'clock every, every day until Thursday. So uh, be thinking of us this week. And if it, you want to try and squeeze your little tyke into it, uh, just show up on Monday morning and we'll see what we can do. All right, that's all we've got for the announcements. Let's head back into worship.
Today is from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the words worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. Good morning. So Last week, last week Saturday, that my daughter Annika graduated from high school. And I know what you're saying. Dave, you're talking about this a lot, right? But it, it was a big deal and it was a lot of fun. And, and it really, for me personally, it was my first normal graduation from high school for one of my kids. It'll actually be my one and only normal high school graduation for my kids because my older daughter, uh, Mia, she graduated in 2020, so she had a drive-through graduation, which I might add was very cool in its own right and very historic and all kinds of things we could say about that. But for this one, it was my one and only chance to go to one of my girls' high school graduation at the Mayo Civic Center. Now, the Mayo Civic Center, we went in there and we sat down and I was just, just taken aback by what I saw. And it looked like this. Check out this picture. I mean, of course, your eyes are drawn to the, the high school graduates there on the floor. I mean, over 530 of them, and it was pretty cool. But my eye is also drawn to the stands. I mean, look at those stands. You have parents and you have moms and dads. You have uh, grandmas and grandpas. You have aunts and uncles, cousins, family, friends, neighbors, all kinds of people in the stands. And, and this picture only captures just a, a fraction of them because there's people seated above me and below me and off to my right and my left and all kinds of people that you can't see. I mean, the stands were, were packed and we were all there to cheer our students on to the next phase of life. And, and, and as a, a student would cross the stage, you know, people would clap and there were other groups who were loud and boisterous, some were a little bit more muted and whatever the case was, that's, that's how that went. But at the end, at the end, the crowd went absolutely berserk. The crowd cheered, the crowd went wild. Now, could you imagine, could you imagine if a student, if, if a student had everyone in the stands that day who had actually invested in them, poured into them? I mean, think about the crowd that you'd have. Of course, you'd have some family, you'd have maybe some moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles and all the rest, of course. And You'd have teachers and you'd have paras and you'd have neighbors and you would have, you would have Sunday school teachers and confirmation guides and doctors and nurses. You'd have your piano instructor. You would have a coach from a sport or a drama instructor from another place. You would have the person who works at Quick Trip and gave you samples every day for lunch. And that would be my favorite invite to the list. But you get the picture. There would be so many people who would be there. And you would have some people who are alive and well and were with us, but you'd also have some other people who have long since died, but they came back for this one moment to sit in the stands and cheer them on. Any one student could have hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. And if all of the students had that kind of a cheering section, I mean, are you serious? 
<laughs> the Viking Stadium couldn't even hold all the people that would be there on that day. And for those of us who were there on that day physically, friends, we were only stand-ins for those who were there in spirit. I mean, all of us in the stands were cheering for them in our own kind of a way. And I'm sure that those students that were there on the, on the floor, they had questions and maybe reservations. And maybe they're apprehensive about what their next step will be. Maybe they don't quite know what that'll be. Maybe there's some fear. Maybe there's some anxiety and there's some worries. Of course, but our job in the stands was to cheer them on and say, we believe in you. You can do it. Now, our Bible story today comes from the book of Hebrews, and it was written to some of the very first Christ followers, the very first Jesus people. And, and it says this, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen is made from things that are not visible. Then it goes on and on and, and to talk about all these kind of heroes, giants of the faith. It gives a Bible Hall of Fame. All those people who have kind of embodied something what faith and life and love is all about. Something that we can, and people that we learn from as we read the stories in this book. And it talks and then name drops, right? It says, well, faith, that was about Noah and that's about Abraham and that's about Sarah and Isaac and Moses and Rahab. It just names all of these these people, and it goes on and on for a chapter, but then it concludes with these words, and I want you to hear them. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. It says we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. I love the way the author writes this. She writes it in such a way that it includes room for us to add to the list. It's not a comprehensive list. It wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be an open-ended list that we can add to that list. And what, who do we add to the list? But those people who have taught and modeled what love and life look like for you and me those who have gone before us. The author paints this picture, paints this picture of, uh, it seems like the, the cloud of witnesses like the, is like the heavenly bleachers, right? Cheering us on, yelling at us, saying that you can do this, take the baton and run the next leg of the race, taking the best of what you have learned from, and, from, from them and then sharing it with all who are around you and those who are yet to come again. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. So take another look at this picture. What if you and me and all of us, what if, what if we are represented by the young people, the graduates on the floor? And, and what if all those people who have gone before us, who have mentored and cared for and taught us and loved us, what if those are all the people in the bleachers cheering for us and saying, we, you got this, you, we believe in you, go for it. Yeah, we know that you have worries and you have concerns and we have fears. That's real. We get it. We understand that. But we also know that, that we are with you, that we believe in you and we are cheering for you and we are 100% behind you in spirit. Now, I take heart in that image, okay? I take heart in that image because I believe that that is in part what the author of the book of Hebrews was trying to encourage those first Jesus people, those first Christ followers to remember. I, I, I think that's, that's what, I, I take heart in this, in, in this image because I think it's also what the author of the book of Hebrews is encouraging 
us as individuals to remember, just to take stock of those lessons that you learn from those who have gone before you and take that and, and, and then lean into it. Lean into it and then you can make Christ's hope and joy and love a reality to all kinds of people around you with every step that you take, with every moment that you have, with every breath that you have into you, in you. You can live this thing out. You can do it. I take heart in this image because it's true for us as individuals, but it's also true for whole, for whole communities. I mean, at Gloria Day today, we are, we are making a very intentional uh, decision about uh, living into our mission of, of welcome and love of neighbor as we look to renovate and repair our space. It's a significant step. It's a, it's a significant step that will require generosity and abundance on the part of all of us. It's a, it's a step that, that will make a difference in the lives of people here, both who are part of Gloria Day right now and people who are part of the, the broader, broader Rochester community and beyond. But it will also make a significant difference and could make all the difference in the world for people that we haven't even met yet. And you know what? People that we may never meet. People who will come long after we are not around here anymore. This work could make a difference to people while we are in those heavenly bleachers cheering them on. And so, just like the graduates in this picture, we are invited to the stage. We are invited to walk with trust and with faith and, and, and taking the baton and moving forward. And the crowd, the crowd goes berserk. <laughs> the crowd will go wild. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you. We thank you for all of the ways that you encourage us on knowing that, that, that there is a great cloud of witnesses around us, people who have shown us the way and encourage us to take the next step in whatever way in our personal lives or in our collective lives together, ways that we might be apprehensive or, or confused or worried. May we feel that encouragement. May we feel the spirit of those who have gone before us nudging us forward just to be able to to go forward with faith and with hope and with trust uh, that, that we are here to be conduits of your love and your joy and your peace for those around us, that we've been shown how to do this and that we can take this very next step. For all of these things we pray in your holy name. Amen. Let's take a minute to go together in a time of prayer. Let's pray. Divine mystery, source of love and light, in the midst of our ever unfolding journey of faith, we come before you with open hearts and minds. We embrace the diversity of our beliefs and experiences, trusting in your boundless grace and inclusive embrace. So as members of one body with the full spectrum of the colors of our diversity, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We recognize that your presence transcends all boundaries and definitions, manifesting in a myriad of ways throughout creation. Forgive us for the times we've neglected its sanctity and exploited its resources. Grant us the wisdom to cherish and protect the wonders of nature, recognizing the interconnectedness of all life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide us in our quest for truth and understanding, knowing that our understanding of you is but a glimpse of your infinite being. Grant our leaders humility and integrity in their service to the people that they govern. May they be guided by justice and compassion, 
working tirelessly for the well-being of all, especially the marginalized and oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we strive for greater, greater equality and inclusion within our communities, empower us to challenge systems of privilege and oppression, dismantling barriers that separate us from one another. Help us to see you in the faces of the marginalized, the oppressed, and the forgotten, and to stand in solidarity with them as co-creators of justice and liberation. Inspire us to build communities of radical hospitality where all are welcome, affirmed, and valued for who they are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us the courage to embrace uncertainty and ambiguity, trusting in your presence, even in the midst of doubt and questioning. We pray for all those who are wrestling with physical, mental, and emotional afflictions. Grant them courage in their struggles and endurance in their trials. Surround them with love and support, reminding them of their inherent worth and dignity. Hear these prayers that we pray silently for those who need you so desperately. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to the rising generation, the future leaders and change makers, infuse them with courage and vision. Empower them to embrace their calling with humility and grace, inspiring hope and fostering transformation in the world. Shape them to be agents of healing and transformation, working to mend the brokenness of our world and to build bridges of understanding and empathy across divides of race, class, gender, and sexuality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Spirit, guide us on the sacred journey of faith as we seek to live out your call to love and justice in our world. May our prayers and actions be a reflection of your light shining brightly within us. In your boundless mercy, hear our prayers and grant us your grace. Amen. Gloria Day is a congregation with a wide open invitation to all. We have in-person and online worships. We have book studies, children ministry opportunities, middle and high school youth events, summer trips. We have the Well and Theo Pub. There are young adult groups our looking within center host events like resets and Tai Chi Cha. We have a clothing ministry called Threads to serve our community. We have a tiny little pantry outside which shares food with everybody. And we have a garden to grow good, fresh produce for families and neighbors in the area who can't afford that. These ministries are a reality because of you and your generosity. We can't do this without you. If you would like to support the ministries at Gloria Day, you can give online or mail a contribution to church. And on behalf of all of us, thank you. Thank you so much for being so generous.
that's waiting for you Knocking at your door In the moment of truth Thank you so much for being with us this morning to worship here at Gloria Day, to worship across our screens. We're all so glad you're here on a Sunday at 930, and I hope you'll be back again with us next week. In the meantime, as you go out into this next week of June, I pray you'll have a wonderful week and that you'll take with you these words of blessing and benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.